Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. In this day, we have a lot of weak Christians. Really weak and carnal Christians. And Paul right into the church at Corinth, they were known for being that carnal church. So he's got to turn their mind now to the focus it's got to get on so that they can become strong spiritually. They're not strong yet. So let me show you what he shares. He says, <clears throat> Who has known the mind of the Lord, verse 16, the last verse of chapter 2, that he will instruct the Lord. He's quoting, by the way, from Isaiah 40. Who has known God's mind that you get to tell him what to do? We don't know. But, but, he says, we have the mind of Christ. Now, chapter 3, verse 1, he says, And I, brethren, I, he says, I could not speak to you as to spiritual men. They weren't really walking in the Spirit, so he couldn't really address them as guys in the Spirit. He said, and rather, as men of flesh, as really as infants, he says, in Christ. He says, I gave you milk to drink, like you give milk to a baby. He said, I couldn't really give you meat, not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. And indeed, even now, to this church, they were not able to receive the, the, the meatier things of the Spirit. So he says, the reason, look at the reason, verse 3, for you are still fleshly. For since you, there's jealousy and there's strife amongst you, he says, are you not fleshly? Are you not walking like mere men? You know, mere men are very carnal-minded, very fleshly, very jealous of different things. And, you know, it says in, well, later, we're not there yet, but in, when we get to the love chapter, say love is patient, love is kind, love is what? Not jealous. Love is not jealous. But carnal people are. They really are. They, they, they see someone else has something, like, I'm jealous, they have it. Or they covet that thing. As you grow in the Lord, you don't actually covet other people's stuff because you're like, you know, God gave it to them and that's a blessing for them. Maybe they needed it. And you know if God needed you to have one, it's, he's a very big God. He could get you one, maybe even better. I, you know, I, that's my secret to not coveting. Don't ever pray, God, I want what they have. Because you don't know. It might be a lemon under the hood. You're going, I want their car. And they're going, man, I want to get rid of this thing, you know piece of junk but you're only judging by outward appearance that's a carnal mind a spiritual mind says you know what god knows what i need and if that's included he can take care of it i don't have to really worry about that but they were walking he says just like mere men now verse four he says for, he says for when one of you says i'm of paul and another one says i'm of apollos he says are you not mere men he says what then is apollos what is paul he says, we're just servants through whom you believed, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one of us. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God, God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters, Paul says, is anything. But who's the important one? Look at the end of that verse, verse 7. But it is God who causes the growth. You know, any farmer knows so when you plant something, you know, you, you put it in the ground. Usually the, it, in ancient days, it counted on the Lord for the rain to do the watering, you know, and directing water that he had already brought to the earth. But we, we use irrigation. Men forget that he's still the one in control of the water, you know, and, and yet we don't really make the plant grow. All we can do is stick the seed in the ground and put water on it. It's God that makes it grow. And Paul says, when it comes to spiritual growth in other people's lives, you just got to remember, it's he that causes the growth. He's the one, and this is where the difference between a carnal Christian and a more mature Christian begins to be more apparent. The more mature Christian is not identifying with I'm of that person or I, I belong to this church or I, I, I'm part of that gang or I follow this leader or that leader. You know, we have in our culture personality cults to the max. I mean, we really do. We have, 
Well, I go to the Glass Garden Church and I go to the Crystal Cathedral or I go to, you know, and they tell the names of these fellows that started those works and I, I don't want to knock them, but they're nothing, just like I'm nothing. Just like what Paul said. Apollos is nothing. Paul says, I'm nothing. It's God who's everything. When you go to church, I pray that wherever church you go to, the pastor keeps pointing you to the Lord. He's the one where our focus should be. Never on men. It's not about following a man. It's about following the Lord. And even Paul himself, when he had new believers, he would say, look, okay, you don't know how to do it. Fine. You can be an imitator of me, he says, as I am an imitator of who? Of Christ. I'll just show you by example. And eventually, you won't even need to see me because you'll get the hang of it and you'll be copying the Lord directly yourself. But by the way, that is a truly, I've used this before as one of the most challenging ways to see how's your spiritual walk going? You're not sure? How about you have a friend who didn't grow up at all, no exposure to Christianity, never got to go to church. And believe me, on this island, there's quite a few. And you get to meet one of them, and they say, I don't know anything about this. How would I do it? Could they say, could, could you say like Paul did? No, you don't know how to do it. Flip, flip, just goes, you don't know how to do it. It's okay. Just copy everything you see me do as I copy the Lord. And you go, but wait a minute. What if there's something you do that you know that's not really the Lord? <laughs> this is where it cleans up your act. Because really, if we, if we would be like Paul, and Paul was willing to do this, he's like, you don't know how to do it? Fine. Be an imitator of me as I am an imitator of Christ. That takes some guts. I mean, that takes commitment to your faith. Because if you say that, especially, by the way, if you want to really get it dialed in quick for your walk, do that with a child. Do that with a Sunday school class. Okay, kids, I'll show you how to be a Christian. Because believe me, anything you do wrong, they will catch you. I don't think you're supposed to use that word. See, God's, God refined me quite a bit, knocked off a few rough edges by making me work with kids first. Like, I didn't know certain swear words weren't allowed in church. I grew up speaking Italian. I could swear in Italian before I could say anything else. That's the first word. Why is it in every language the first words you learn is swear words? You know? And as a kid, I... I you know, learned them in Italian and, and in English, and then the Spanish neighborhood was just two blocks over, so I learned them in Spanish. And I was like, I was a fluent cursor, multiple language cursor. And the problem is, I didn't even realize how it, that those words had crept into my daily vocabulary. You know, I'd be telling a story, and I would just be expressing it, and I thought everybody used these words in every sentence, because, I mean, isn't that how you're supposed to talk? Not in Sunday school. No siree. The kids cleaned me up right away. You're, no, my mom says you're never supposed to say that word. Oh, what word do you say? And I found out I was using a lot of swear words. I didn't even know. I mean, it wasn't even, con it's just amazing how you can do it and not even be aware. So when you say to a kid, here's how to be a Christian, follow my example. As I Imi you imitate me as I imitate the Lord. Eventually, you won't even need to. Now, you need to be clear to tell him. Eventually, you won't even need me in the way. You'll get the whole hang of this so good. You will imitate the Lord. And hopefully, you'll say to someone else someday, now you imitate me as I imitate the Lord. That's what we want to do is grow to where we're all being the imitators of Jesus. Paul says, I'm nothing. Apollos is nothing. God's everything. He's the one that causes the growth. Verse 8, he says, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field. You're God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me like a wise master builder, Paul says, I laid a foundation, another is building on it, but each man must be careful how he builds on it. For, for no man can lay a foundation on another than, than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's the chief cornerstone we read in Hebrews that the whole building is built upon. There's no other foundation you should lay down for someone's faith other than Jesus. Everything's about Jesus. That's the whole 
firm foundation of our faith. If they veer away from that, they're building on a, a wrong building for faith. If you're building it on Muhammad or Buddha or any other, any other person, you've got the wrong foundation for your faith. Now, some people say, well, you're really fundamentalist. You're really narrow-minded. I Listen, don't get mad at me, okay? Jesus said, I am, in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father except, what? Through me. Period. He didn't go, well, I am one of many ways. See, either he is a full-out liar, or he was absolutely who he said he was. The Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, to show us the way to God. And I ch I've studied other religions. They, none of them, Buddha didn't say he was the way. In fact, Buddha said, there has to be a God. Look at the evidence of all creation. There's so much, it, it, it testifies there is a very creative creator. It, he seemed to be quite intellectual. Very observant man. A little bit chubby from the statues that I've seen. <laughs> but, but he seemed to look around and go, wow. And you know what he said? He said, if... If there's all this design, then there's got to be a designer. And I choose to call that designer God, he says. So therefore, we must seek the way to God. That's the principal teaching of Buddhism, by the way. In case any of you haven't taken the time to study, you want to meet someone, they, they say they're a Buddhist, say, are you a true Buddhist? This is what you want to do, boil it right down. A true Buddhist is a seeker of the way to God. That's the the very fundamental teaching of Buddhism. And the beauty of it is, he came 400 years before Christ. I'm rounding off, but just to make it easy for your mind. 400 BC. If he had beat, I believe if he had lived after Jesus, he would have become a Christian. He just lived before Christ came. But he, he recognized just by looking at creation and seeing the intricacies, how a, a, a flower is has a certain bee that's attracted to it and goes and pollinates that one to that one. And he, he said, look at all these things. They can't be by coincidence. It's just too wonderfully met, majestically made. There's got to be a designer. Someone made this. We've got to seek the way to him. We've got to find the way. And that's the prince. And I love to find true Buddhists because I get to go, oh, John 14, 6. Jesus is the way. The one you were looking for? Found it. Yeah. Got your answer for you. He's the way, the truth, the life. No one gets the Father except through him. I got the way for you. If you're a true Buddhist, you're going to be really happy about this. Because they can find the way to God. Now here, Paul says, there is no other foundation which should be laid other than Jesus Christ. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com Mahalo and God bless.